the tenth of the sequence on MATLAB Basics is going to focus on the topic of function files. So we established earlier that using script files for sequences of operations is quite useful. However, script files have the disadvantage of corrupting data in the workspace and having fixed variable names. So in general they're quite clumsy to use for more advanced programming requirements. So a better programming structure is the function file which has specified inputs, outputs and relationships between them. Now the use of the word function in MATLAB is a little like what you might be used to in mathematics where you write y equals f of x. You put in an input x and the output y has a specified dependence on this, basically depends on the function f. And you'll see a function file is analogous to this. So why not script files? They're good for testing code snippets and ideas. However, all the variables in a script file are in the command window workspace. So once you have 50 to 100 script files, you're going to lose track of which variables different script files are using. And what will happen is the files may corrupt each other's variables and thus the way they work may become unpredictable. So generally speaking, it's not a robust way to write code. Function files allow users to develop code to do specific operations, but the key thing is without corrupting the data you have in the workspace. Now these operations can also work with any variable names whereas script files have fixed variable names and it's a lot easier if you have variable names. So here's a simple maths example. I can define a function y equals f of x as something like x squared plus sine 2x and then you'll notice using the same operation f I'm quite permitted to use a different variable name w for the output put as the input 2z plus 3 but the operation is defined by this function f and so I now get that this means 2z plus 3 squared plus sine of 2 times 2z plus 3 so you'll notice I've changed the variable names but not the implied function f so it's the same function but different input variable different output name and what you'll see is in MATLAB a function file acts in an exactly analogous fashion. You can change the names of the outputs, you can change the names of the inputs, but the f remains the same. So let's give some simple examples of function files and we'll do use some MATLAB built-in files to do this. So sine is a simple example and you notice here I can write y equals sine x or z equals sine w or t equals sine a plus 2. You'll notice I'm changing the names of the output and the input but the operation is always the same. It's compute the sine. How about r comma c equals size a where r gives you the number of rows, c gives you the number of columns. P equals G E A comma B, where you'll notice A and B are two numbers, and P is a logical variable. And Y comma T equals step G comma T end. And you'll see here you put in a system object G, the other input is an end time, and the function gives you Y and T, which are the corresponding step response and times. So these are all examples of function files where the relationship is defined by the function. But the variables names you use are entirely up to you. So a key point. With a function file, specific relationships are defined between the input and output variables. In the call statement, we can use whatever variable names we like, as the variable names do not affect the implied relationship. So here's an example you can see where I've used the same function file size, but I've changed the names. So here I've said RA, comma, CC is size A and that gives me the dimensions of matrix A. Or RB and CB equals size B gives me the dimensions of B. And rows X, comma, columns X gives me the dimensions of this matrix X2, X2 underscore T. So the same function, I can use whatever variable names I like. So the key point next then is how do we create our own function files.
And really, what you've got to do is decide what relationships you want. And this means define your input variables, so the things that you want to choose, and then define the output variables. And clearly, within this, you're defining the dependence of the output variables upon the input variables. And then the function file is defined by putting this line first. You'll notice the first word is function. That tells MATLAB I am defining a function file. I've now put this back to front. Can you believe it? Well, that's good. Because if you make mistakes, the viewer is more likely to remember it. So in the square brackets, we put all the output function names. Then you put your file name. And then in the round brackets, you put all of your input names. So basically what you'll see is use the square brackets for the outputs and the round brackets for the inputs. Now it's possible for function files to have variable numbers of inputs and outputs and for the operation of the file to depend upon how many inputs and outputs are supplied by the user when they write the statement in the command window. Um, and for this to happen, the file would have to include a number of conditional statements which are dependent upon how many inputs have used and how many outputs have you used. And you can detect these with nargin and nargout. Now, I'm mentioning that for completeness, but my advice is, if you're a beginner, avoid this complexity because it's just going to create problems. If you want to see some examples, go to the MATLAB window and type things like help size or help plot and you will see that MATLAB shows you there's a number of different ways you can use those commands with different numbers of inputs and different numbers of outputs and what they do varies depending on how many inputs and outputs you give. Alright, let's go to some examples of files that we can write ourselves. So you'll see the first thing we do, the first line of code, we write this function as the first word. We then define the output variables in square brackets and the input variables in round brackets. And in between, we have the file name, which here is MATLAB underscore basics 10a. Now, having had that statement first, what we do next is we define how the outputs depend upon the inputs. So you'll see this first line, I've defined x, which depends upon the inputs. I've defined y, which depends upon the inputs. And then my output values, out1 and out2, depend on these, inter in these should we say, internal variables, x and y. So just a reminder, if I wanted to use this function um, in my MATLAB, the way I would do it is I would write everything which is in this statement except the word function. So I go to the command window and I essentially write this out1, out2 equals MATLAB basics 10a round brackets in 1, in 2, in 3. Now the call statement, we can actually use different variable names and I'm going to illustrate this in a minute. Separate workspaces is a really key point about function files. That is, they have a private workspace which is not shared with the main workspace in the command window. And that's a really key point about function files and why they're so useful. So the only variables in the function file workspace are those you bring in through the call statement. So the, the input values you bring in through the call statement. The only variables that are taken back to the command workspace are the output variables in the call statement. Now, a potentially confusing point, especially for beginner programming, is that the same variables can have different names in the two different workspaces. So the variable in the command window workspace may have one name, whereas the variable in the function workspace may have a different name. So here's an example. We'll use this MATLAB Basics 10a. So if I'm in the command window and I want to use this function, here's how I would use it. I'd write this statement and you'll see the most important thing is the syntax, which is two outputs and three inputs. 
So you see I've got three inputs here, which I've called I1, I2, I3, and two outputs, which I've called O1 and O2. Now, in the function file workspace, you'll remember that the first line we said was out1, comma out2 is MATLAB basics in1, in2, in3. So you'll notice there's different variable names. So what's actually going on here? Well, what's going on is there's a name change as you go from the command window to the function file workspace. So what was I1 in the command window is in1 in the function workspace. What was I2 in the command window is in2 in the function file workspace. And similarly, I3 has gone to in3. And similarly, in the function file workspace, we're producing out1 and out2. But when we return them to the command window, they get returned as O1 and O2. So what we're going to do is illustrate this using MATLAB, and then hopefully you'll get the idea. And what we're going to do is use the command whose to see the variables within the function file, so the private workspace. So here's our file, MATLAB Basics 10a. And there's our window here. So if you look at this file, you'll notice, apart from these internal commands, I've got down here the command whose. So what that's going to allow me to do is see what variables are defined inside this function. Now, first of all, let's go to the command workspace and go who. And you can see we've got all these different variables, a, and p, l, step, age, h, p, p, all these different variables. But when we go into this function workspace, you'll see none of these variables exist. So let's take this command, and copy it, and we'll put it here because this is the command we need to use. Now, the key point is I can use whatever variable names I like. So instead of in1, in2, in3, I'm just going to put some numbers, 4, 7, 8. And instead of out1 and out2, I'm going to call it O2, and let's call it T1. You can call them whatever you like. So now I'm going to run this command. Now, if I go up, you'll see where this who statement occurs which is in the middle of this function file, it's told me here are the variables that exist. You'll see in1, in2, in3, out1, out2, x and y. And they are the variables in1, in2, in3, you can see x here, y here, out1 and out2. So the only variables that exist inside this file are those variables there. And you'll remember these are totally different from the variables which were defined in the command window. And I can look at those again if I go who, and you'll see what have we got now, all these variables, including the T1 and the O2 that were produced by my file. Now, I've called that statement doing 4, 7, and 8. I can put things like T1. I can use T1 twice if I want. I can use O2, it doesn't matter. And I can change the variable names here, call that capital PP call that QQQ, it really doesn't matter. So the key thing is the dependence between the variables. So if I run that, it will still work, it gives me some answers, but you'll notice the names inside the function workspace are always the same, and they don't have any impact on the names that come out to the command window. Headers and comments then. All good files have headers and comments, and the headers describe what the file does and how to use it. And this is really important if you've got complex code in industry. It should also include information on authorship, dates of edits, and so on. Now, comments should also be interspersed in the code to explain what different blocks of code do and to give the code some structure. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the headers in some of the files that I've written and show how these headers can be useful. So we're going to look at Basics 10a and Basics 10b. So here's Basics 10a. Now the header is this bit at the top with all these percentages. And what you can do is if you go to the command window and you type help followed by this function file name. So there it is, the function file name is MATLAB Basics 10a. Then it will produce on the screen the code that's put 
with all these percentages at the top. And you'll notice what have I included in that code, let's make this a bit bigger, is I've included an explanation of how to call this file. So that's really key. How do I call this file? What does the file do? Now, 10a is not a very good example because it's not really doing anything in particular. So let's go to 10b. That's a better example. So first of all, let's type the help. <coughs> so I go help 10b and it gives me all this information here. So let's have a look at it. Demonstration of a simple function file. It's given me the call statement here. This is how I call it. It tells me precisely the statement to use tells me what it does. It creates a plot of a function summarized with a character expression in f string in the domain x min less than or equal to x less than or equal to x max. So you can see x min here and x max define the domain. The plot is constructed from number, there's number there, of equispace points and it gives an example of an f string in case you didn't know how to enter it. So here's an example. The outputs x and y are the independent and dependent variables used to construct the plot. So what we can do now is we can copy this because the whole point of that is to give me something to use. So I've copied it and now what I'm going to do is put in some numbers. So I could put in this string that they've given me as an example. So let's go here to where it says string and let's put in that example. Okay, so x min what number should we put in there? Let's put in something like minus 1. x max, let's put in 3. How many points do you want? Let's put in, say, 50. And now let's run it. And there you see, it's plotted my function. There's the function there. Between x min, minus 1, and x max, 3. And the key thing is that this header has told me how to do it. Now. You'll notice again this is an example of a function file because I've got specific operations in here. I've got my function here, I've got my x min here, my x max here, and my number of points here. So I can change those values. I could say, no, I don't want 50 points, I'll have 20 points. I don't want to go to 3, I want to go to 2. Not for minus 1, I want to go for minus 4. It wasn't sine 3x, it was sine 2x. It wasn't x squared it was x cubed. I can change everything there, run it again, and now we have a different plot. So conclusions. We've demonstrated the usefulness of function files for executing dependencies between variables. So it allows complex computations and relationships to be tested and saved for easy use later. And we're no longer restricted to particular choices of variable names as the function file has a private workspace. So any interim computations have no impact on the variables in the command window workspace. And to define a function file, the first line of the function file defines the number and internal naming of the inputs and outputs.